Okay, so we'll begin with the next talk, the last talk about GStreamer. Uh, this time we'll focus on debugging uh, GStreamer applications, um, a talk by Guillaume Demotte. Thank you. Uh, so my name is uh, Guillaume. Is that okay for the microphone? Okay. Uh, I'm a multimedia engineer working at Collabora. Um, just to let you know, we are currently looking to hire a bunch of people. So if you're interested working in free software, please uh, let us know. You can find us with uh, this kind of hoodie and we have a standard uh, job corner. I think. Like that? Okay, come so? Okay. So yeah, if you're interested in uh, working on free software with us, uh, just come talk to us. Uh, today I'm going to talk about debugging JStreamer application, uh, what uh, we developed in the last release to make that easier for you, and um, what I learned uh, while doing that. So I'll start talking about tracers, uh, which are a new mechanism uh, used for debugging. Uh, I'll give some more detail on the leak tracer, which I developed a few months ago. I'll talk about GST Shark, and I'll finish with some tools which can help you dealing with JStreamer uh, locks, which I found quite useful. So, uh, GST Tracer, it's a new mechanism which has been introduced in 1.8. Uh, it's meant to be used by a debugging tool, so uh, that's the only purpose of this new system. And uh, it allows uh, tracers to uh, hook inside the internal of JStreamer core. So uh, by doing that, plugins can gather a whole lot of information about what's going on in the pipeline. For example, when a buffer is being pushed from one element to another, when um, uh, all this kind of information. And this allows tracers to gather all this info and produce a formatted output. So it's meant to be um, usable by external application for easily parsing and this kind of things. So um, it's been proved very useful so far. Uh, and now I'm going to show you different kind of things you can do uh, using tracers. Uh, OK, this is absolutely not readable. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, I was unsure about the best way to display console output. I tried the image, but apparently that was a terrible idea. Uh, uh, the to enable tracer, it's pretty easy. You have the GST tracer environment variable that you can just uh, define with the uh, tracers you want to enable. So for this example, I use the stat and the air usage one. So you just define that. And then you launch your uh, JStreamer application. Here I'm using GST launch, which is the kind of uh, tool we use to test uh, pipeline. But you can do that with pretty much, well, pretty any app, uh, JStreamer application. So you could use GST Play just to play a video. You could use Totem or whatever. That will work with any JStreamer application, which is pretty convenient. Then uh, you need to say that you want the tracer output to be uh, generated. So for that, we use the GST debug environment variable with the GST tracer category and log level. And then uh, I, drop, I drop everything to a file using the GST debug, uh, debug file. Sorry. Uh, environment variable. So as you can see, there is nothing to be done programmatically. You don't have to rebuild anything. It's all integrated in JStreamer itself, and it will be automatically enabled by using those few environment variable. Uh, you run that. Uh, it will generate a lot of logs to this file. And then there is the GST stat tool, which is part of JStreamer core as well, which will parse those files and generate a bunch of statistics which are completely unreadable, but uh, it will give you the number of elements which has been in the pipeline, the number of pads, uh, the number of, of buffer which has been extend, uh, exchanged uh, across the pipeline, uh, the timing as well. So you can see uh, at what time in your pipeline each element has received its first buffer, which can be useful if you have like a very uh, high uh, startup time in your pipeline. You can see which element took more time the others to start, these kind of things. Um, so that's the stats tracer. Uh, another one which I quite very useful that Olivier mentioned in this talk is the latency tracer. So the idea is uh, each time a buffer is generated at the source, it will travel to the sink. 
and the, this tracer will try to measure how long it took to go from the source to the sink. So this is used in a uh, live pipeline. Like typically you are capturing from webcam and you are streaming to the internet or you are uh, displaying on the screen and you want uh, the latency to be as low as possible. And this can help you to see what's, how long it took for the buffer to, uh, to be processed by the pipeline. So once again, to use that, you don't have to recompile anything. You just enable the tracer by using the GST tracer uh, on environment variable. Then you launch the pipeline. Here I just uh, I create a simple pipeline which is capturing from the webcam, which is encoding in intrusic force, which is decoding, and which is then displayed uh, on the screen using the GL uh, imaging element. And the tracer will, for each buffer, tell you how long it took. So you have that here in the time, uh, which is in nanoseconds, which is not really readable. But uh, you have that displayed on the screen. So you have the information in real time uh, to help you debugging this kind of problem. Um, another kind of things you can do with Tracer is to implement very specific tool. So here uh, I'm going to present the leak tracer, which is a tracer I wrote um, one release ago. So the idea is most of the time when you are dealing with uh, memory leaks, we are using uh, Valgrind. That's, I guess, most uh, C and C++ developer are used to. It's a very great tool, but the problem is it can be very, very slow. So if you are working on very... Um, CPU or memory uh, consuming process. Uh, sometimes Valgrind will just make things too slow. It's mostly unusable. Uh, another problem of Valgrind is it may not be available on your platform. So as Olivier said, we are doing a lot of embedded development, which usually have terrible build system and distribution and this kind of things. And it may be a challenge just to get Valgrind running. And finally, um, you may find a lot of memory leak or false positive, but which appear as memory leak to Valgrind, which are totally not related to your code. So if there is leak in library you are using, like the encoding or decoding library or invalid memory or things like that, uh, you will get all this output from Valgrind, but that's not really something you can easily fix. So most of the time what you really want is to know the leak in the code you actually wrote. So for that, uh, I developed the, the leak tracer, which is using the, um, the new memory, uh, the new system hooks in JStreamer core, and which will manually track the ref counting of each uh, G object and the GST mini object. So that means that only the JStreamer code will be tracked, which is actually what we want here. So uh, it will tra keep track of that, and at the end of the execution of the application, if it detects that some objects are still alive, so which have been leaked because they should have been destroyed at this point, it will raise uh, a GLIP running. So that's something you can really hook in your uh, QA system or CI system and uh, to detect if any uh, leaks have been introduced. Um, this tracer has been integrated in JStreamer Core in 1.10. So that means that if you have this JStreamer version, it's already there. You don't have to build any extra tool uh, to use it. So here is an example. Uh, once again, it's the same system. I just use the tracers uh, environment variable. The tracer is called leak. So that's the name I put there. And I run uh, a pipeline. Uh, the pipeline needs to terminate because the leaks are detected at the end of the process, so if the process keeps running, obviously we won't be able to know if there is a leak or not. So that's why I say I just want 10 buffers from the source, so the webcam here, and then terminate it. And uh, if uh, at the end of the pipeline uh, it detects a leak, you see, well, it's yellow, so it's warning, you can trust me on that. And uh, it will say, okay, this object is still alive, it will give you what the type of the object, and if we give you the refcon, so you can have an idea how many uh, references are getting lost uh, in, in your code. So that's for the, the basic feature. Uh, I try to make it more useful and a bit more smarter. So we are using uh, lip unwind 
to get a track trace. So uh, once you enable that, uh, you have to enable it manually because it can consume quite uh, a bit of uh, a bunch of memory. So we try to only enable it when we actually need it, and we filter out the object uh, we are interested in. So a typical workflow for that will be to start with the simple version, try to see which object has been leaked. It's really a shame that we can see the uh, the name. But you see, okay, uh, the test sync is getting leaked. I'm going to track it down, and then you enable the stack trace uh, for uh, for this very specific object. So only this one will be tracked. And when doing that, uh, the tracer output will give you a full uh, call trace. So you can see uh, the succession of calls which lead to the, um, the creation of the object. Of course, we don't know where it's been leaked, but at least you know where the object has been created. So if a lot of objects are created in a different context, you can have a better idea of uh, where this object is coming from and start to track down manually uh, the steps leading to the leak. Um, the tracer also produces a bunch of extra features which can be quite useful while debugging. Uh, you can track each uh, individual refing and unrefing operation. So that may be part of the debugging of the, a specific leak. You'll see each time an object gain or, le or lose a reference you will see the full stack, stack trace, so that can make things easier for you. Uh, you can also enable things like uh, signal support. So if you enable that, you need an extra environment variable. But if you do, uh, you can send uh, the SIG, one, SIG user one signal to the process, and that will list all the objects which are currently alive. So this can be useful if you are debugging a problem without um, terminating the process. And we also have a checkpoint system. So the, the idea here is you send the signal once to the process. You do something with the application, like, I don't know, start a video and stop it or something like that. And then you send it again, and it will list all the objects which have been created during the, since the last time you received the signal, and all the objects which has been deleted. So this may be useful to develop applications that you don't want to start and stop all the time, which will be too complicated to do so. So that's the kind of features we have which you wouldn't find with tools like Vitegrind, for example. Um, so uh, a few extra tracers. So now I'm going back to the tracers. Uh, all the tracers I presented so far are merged in JStreamer core but third party can also develop their own tracers. Um, GST Shark is one of them. Uh, it's developed by Widgeron, and it contains a whole lot of tracers, which are more specialized version of the upstream one or provide extra features. You can measure things like interlatency. So it's a bit like the latency tracer I presented before, except that it will measure the latency between each element in the pipeline while the upstream one, it's measuring from the source to the sink. So it's a bit more uh, precise on this regard. Uh, we have some plan with Nicola to merge that in the upstream tracer at some point. Um, it can as you also be used to measure performance on the pipeline, which is something that's found quite useful. So for example, it can give you uh, at what rate our buffer are arriving on each source path in the pipeline. So for example, if you have a pipeline which is not uh, going as fast as it should. So you are expecting 60 FPS in your screen, but you are just getting 20, for example. Uh, this may help you to find which element is operating slower. So, um, and then f try to improve uh, the performance on this specific element. Uh, it do a lot of different things, like schedule times. That's the last time since a buffer has been received on an element, and these kind of things. You can use it to track queue. So it's a whole lot of, uh, of tracers which can be used to track performance and these kind of things. And another nice thing with um, GST Shark, it comes up with uh, some script to generate uh, graphics using new plot uh, from the data generated by the tracers. So you can see things like, um, so here we have the time, okay, in seconds. Uh, here uh, each, um, here we have all the elements. 
So the source, the encoder, the decoder, the things, these kind of things. And here on the left, it will tell you at which rate um, each element is operating. And here you have the CPU load. And so you can try to see how uh, this is affecting the whole pipeline. So if you see a big spike somewhere, uh, you may ask yourself, okay, this is not something that should happen on my pipeline, and start debugging from there. So that's the kind of things you can do to try to have a bigger picture view of what's happening uh, in your application, which uh, can be quite useful. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk today is uh, some tools to uh, help you uh, working with JStreamer logs. So uh, if you have already done some JStreamer debugging in your life, you probably end up with tons of this kind of logs, which uh, contain a lot of very, very useful information, but which can be quite scary to look at. Uh, I know that when I start working with JStreamer, that's something which was, I was really afraid of that because you know that this contain helpful information to help you debugging your problem, but you don't really know where to start. You don't really know where to look if you are not used to do that. So uh, I'm going to show you a couple of things which can make that easier for you. Uh, a nice one is the JStreamer Debug Viewer, which is a nice uh, Python graphical application, which is part of the JStreamer developer tools set. So that's something you can find on the JStreamer uh, Git repository. And uh, which will parse the full log and will give you um, a graphical uh, interface to look at that. So you see here on the top bar, it will kind some kind of graph uh, over time of uh, when the logs are being generated. Because each log is associated with a timestamp. So we can see at the beginning of the uh, at the start of the application, a lot of logs are being generated then some gap, then some log. And then here we have a very big gap between uh, more activity occurs in the pipeline. So just by looking at that, you can see that there is a gap here. So you may ask yourself, why is my pipeline blocked at this point? Because usually when a pipeline is doing something, it produces some log. And just try to look at oh, what's going on here. So for example, am I waiting for the kernel? Or is a thread block or something like that? So that's a nice, uh, a nice tool you can use to do that. And uh, another one I just started a few months ago is a GST log parser. Um, my goal here was um, I often find myself writing small Python application to parse logs. So for example, if I wanted to compute some metrics from specific logs of these kind of things, and I was always doing very hacky uh, Python script to do that. And I say, okay, let's try if I can do something more reusable and a bit cleaner. It was also a time where I wanted to learn Rust. So I say, okay, let's try to write it in Rust. This is literally my first Rust project. So the code may not be so well written, but at least it's been proved useful so far. So it's a high level uh, parsing library, which will uh, read your log and create high level object, object for them. Uh, it will give you an iterator in Rust, and from that you can very easily filter from, for a specific category, from a specific object, specific line or whatever, and do some, um, basically whatever you want with that. So uh, the code is there on GitHub, and I will just give you one small example of things you can really easily do. Is um, once again, it's not usable, it's not readable, but uh, tsdiff is a small tool, uh, small tool I wrote using that, and which will, uh, for each thread, will compute uh, the difference between one specific event and the last event is this thread. So once again, if there is uh, some point um, a gap in the pipeline which is being stuck, uh, it will detect it very easily, and uh, it's not yet re not really readable. But uh, the bigger difference will be highlighted in red. So just by parsing that, you can see okay. Uh, my pipeline here rated for 100 milliseconds. That shouldn't happen. What's going on here? So just you can see the timestamp difference very easily using that. And uh, that's it. I think I have like 25 seconds for questions. Five minutes. 
Ah, oh, okay, it's not, it's not enough. Ah, oh, okay, great. Okay. Oui, des questions là-bas. Uh, hello. Hi. So w when you mentioned uh, in the beginning the leak tracer, mm -hmm. uh, you're right, Volagrind is very slow for most things, but uh, there is also Libasan, which is much faster. Uh, but uh, can you, if you want to, uh, if someone wants to use Libasan, can you use it with your G uh, GST tracer, uh, leak tracer, or is it... Uh, so is the LLVM tool? No, Libasan is actually part of, uh, it's included in the GCC. Uh, okay, uh, I don't think so I have a work with that. address sanitizer, basically. So it's much faster. Ah, okay, okay, okay. You can, it does not, the, the difference is that it does not detect mm -hmm. uh, the origins of the, of the leaks, but it finds the leaks. Okay. Uh, it also uh, I, I know. produces stack trace. Okay, I never try using it. Uh, it's good to know, thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess it will be more... Um, it's more generic. Yeah, you. more generic yeah. and lower level kind of tool, like Valgrind. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. And the ref counting, yeah, it won't do ref counting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, it, it's a bit like, like with value grind. It will just find the memory leak. Well, here we are interested in ref counting problems. So, the leak tracer will be like a more specialized tool for a very specific problem. And uh, I guess the uh, basin could be uh, yeah, more like a replacement to value grind, I guess. Okay, okay. thanks. What you do? Ah, maybe that's why I was looking at that. Yes. Apparently, you have to recompile to be able to use it? Yes, yes. Ah, okay, okay. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay. I remember, I, I looked at that a while ago, and that was a problem for me because I was working on embedded device, and recompiling with specific tool can be quite challenging, which is why I, I went to the tracer approach. Yeah. So it can work without any other kind of just enabler? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. If you build a recent version of JStreamer, it should be built by default, and it will work. The only thing you may want to change for a build system is to make sure to have lib and wind, which will allow you to get the stack trace. But even if you don't, it has some fallback code, which will try to, to get you inf useful information. So yeah, that's the big advantage of the tracer, I think, is you don't need to rebuild anything. Anything else? Yeah. yeah uh, you mentioned the GST shark. Yes. How do you use it? Is it a, uh, an element in the pipeline, or is it a standalone? No, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a set of tools. So it's a bunch of tracers. So it's a JSTMR plugin, basically. Yeah. And, uh, but it's not power JSTMR core, so you will have to build it yourself manually, and it will give you all the tracer I mentioned to um, get more information about the performance, about the interlatency, and the script to generate the graph issue as well. So it's not an element, it's a bunch of tracer and scripts to produce uh, yeah, useful information from that. Anyone else? Nope. Okay, yeah, thank uh, you very much. Uh, we have a question uh, uh -huh. in the back. Uh, wait for the microphone for the recorder. Hi, um, I used to have some pixelization issues when I'm trying to play the encrypted dash streams. Mm -hmm. So which is the best efficient method of debugging? Uh, those kind of pixelization issues? Well, <laughs> uh, what I will do, I will start by looking at the, the logs uh, from the specific element which will cause the problem. Mostly the GST launch is completely successful and I did not see any error logs. Yeah, yeah, that's why you have to use the GST debug uh, environment variable I mentioned here. Yeah. So if you use... Uh, where is it? Uh, GST debug here. So here I ask him to just give me the information about the tracer, but if you put just five, for example, that will give you all the debug information of all the elements, which will be quite a lot. Okay. But uh, from there, you can start looking at what's going on, and uh, that will give you more information. After that, you'll have to end up debugging. So if you are not used to do that yourself, the best way would be to just file a bug, I'd say. And, okay. uh, Great, Maybe thanks. Uh, yeah. There is no magic concern, unfortunately. <laughs> Debugging is art, and I'm afraid it will always be. Anything else?
Okay, oh, the last question, maybe? 